This week on the first Drake Insider. In the first Drake Insider, we'll take a look at summer workouts for the men's and women's basketball programs, plus go one-on-one -on -one with Athletics Director Brian Harden. We'll tell you about a few football philanthropists that spent nine days in India and introduce you to a new archive series that will feature Paul Morrison's athletic collection. If you're watching live on Facebook, please like and comment, and I'll be answering questions throughout the duration of the first Drake Insider. Let's get started. Watching the Drake Insider, a Drake Sports Media production. June is far from the offseason for the men's and women's basketball programs, from camps to workouts to practices and everything in between. Expectations for both programs also continue to rise. And for the men, year two under head coach Darren DeVries is just getting started. Everybody knows Drake's history, and they're on the brink of four today. Now it's to McLean who skips it to Anthony Murphy. Murphy lets a three fly. It's it. good! 68-54, the Bulldogs with back-to-back -back threes. And Darren DeVries has done it here. Absolutely an incredible, improbable season by the Drake Bulldogs. In the first season under Darren DeVries, the Bulldogs won 24 games and claimed a share of the Missouri Valley Conference Championship. All right, guys, welcome back, uh, vets. New guys, uh, welcome to Drake. On June 3rd, the men's basketball team reported for their first summer workouts. Just a few ground rules for, for the vets. Uh, I thought you guys did an unbelievable job representing you know, what we want this program to be about uh, last year. All right, here we go. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Every team is starting, you know, from, from square one again. And, and you got to reprove yourself. And, that, and that'll be our message to our guys. You know, last year was great. It was a lot of fun. Gotten some excitement around the program, and, and that's great. And our expectations have, have certainly been raised. Uh, uh, but now we got to start it again. Guys, last year we sat in this room and nobody knew who you were. I'm not sure we knew who, who, we, who we were, okay? Who we had. This will be a different deal, though. You'll be a little more hunted this year. So there's a different mindset that comes with that. I mean, last year, no one knew anybody. There was barely any talking on the floor, locker room, during camp. Um, and every drill we did, we had to learn exactly what to do every time. So now coming in, knowing what we got to do, knowing our principles as a team, I feel like it's a big difference from last year. The Bulldogs returned five players that started at least one game. Noah Thomas, DJ Wilkins, Liam Robbins, Trammell, and Anthony Murphy. A few other impact players are back, mixed with seven newcomers and newly eligible transfer, Roman Penn. It feels good because you know you're actually practicing knowing you're about to play or hopefully play, so just getting in shape and then you know, building that team chemistry. Yeah, it's a completely different feel this summer, just when you have you know, returners coming back and, and guys that have at least been through it once with you. And, uh, so you, you have something uh, in practice that you can call on guys and, and they can go out there and demonstrate because they've, they've done it for a year. Tone is driving it. Garrett's in good shape. Okay, so now we don't need, he doesn't need your help anymore. The most eye-popping aspect of the summer workouts are the amount of bodies. Yeah, I'm really excited about the, the roster we have. The, um, you, know, you do have a, a really good mix of, of veterans and new guys. and. Uh, I think practices and, and things will be really competitive. Uh, I love our depth and, and because of that I, I think guys are going to challenge each other every day which uh, should only lend to, to us getting better and better. Biggest thing is just teaching these guys uh, how to practice as far as coming in, talking, coming in, giving it all, all your every rep, um, just different things, uh, talking, the terminology we use, uh, learning uh, what we do offensively and defensively. But the main thing right now is just coming in and practice and knowing you got to get better every day. The Bulldogs hope to merge the experience of a Valley title and surge of talent to continue 
their upward trajectory. If guys will continue with the same kind of focus and effort and attitude they did about uh, the way they approached practice last year and now they get the new guys on board with that, uh, it should be an exciting summer and fall for us to see where this group can, can kind of grow into. One, two, good job man, good job. This August, the men are traveling to Costa Rica with an overseas trip. They get one extra hour of practice per week, which is good for team bonding. As for the women, all their work will be done right here. And in their regular season finale, the Bulldogs send their four seniors out in style and have three-peated in the Missouri Valley Conference. Three straight Missouri Valley Conference regular season titles for the Bulldogs as they defeat Bradley. We've been really picking up the intensity. We want to go where we've never been before, so we've do been doing stuff that we've never done before. The Bulldogs spent the majority of last season ranked in the top 25, and after three straight NCAA tournaments, they're hungry for more. I think the biggest message for our team is to continue to do the same things that we, you know, we really focus on every year. Of course, in the summer, you're going to work on your craft, you're going to work on your skill set, and you want to just get better as a basketball player. And then the other probably more important part is that you just really want to fall in love with the game again, and you want to fall in love with your team and everything else. So there's been a lot of really fun stuff. Now, don't get me wrong, we've been really competitive, probably more competitive than we've ever been. Um, but there's both elements of getting better and having a ton of fun and just loving what you do. It's been really fun to come back and get started with workouts and camps and just have everyone together here. I mean, we're doing some individual workouts and team workouts and just getting pushed by the coaches and having a really good time being back together. The Bulldogs graduated a strong four-person senior class, but retained two first-team all-conference players, Becca Hittner and Sarah Rhine. Transfers Kiara Collier and Grace Berg join the team, as do three freshmen. That's kind of like the beautiful part about it is that you know you have this team and you go on this you know this this run together and it's so awesome and then you have people leave and you bring in new people and you get to kind of do it all over again. It's really fun to be able to to mesh some really high level experience with complete inexperience and it's been really fun to be able to see where it's gone but our players get in the gym they have really embraced all the different things that we really want them to embrace. As always with this group hard work is surrounded by a culture of simply having fun. I think as coaches we're pushing ourselves a little bit more we're pushing our team a little bit more uh, but again, you really still want to have a ton of fun, um, but we do, we want it, we're really motivated and we're motivated to get in the gym and we're motivated to be together and we're motivated to just take it another level. The men's and women's Missouri Valley Conference Championship was all a part of a memorable 2018-19 season. With that year now in the rearview mirror, we look forward to next year as we catch up going one-on-one -on -one with Athletics Director Brian Harden. Three conference championships, three NCAA tournament teams. You had a coach of the year, a coaching staff of the year. It was a banner year in many respects. What's going to stand out most for you? Yeah, Michael, it was a great year for the Bulldogs. You know, a lot of times when we get out and, and go speak to different groups in the community or alumni groups and across the country, we talk about how it, it's a great time to be a Drake Bulldog. And, it, it, there's there's very true meaning to, to that. You know, we, we like to talk a lot about how trying to excel to, to, to have great success in the classroom and in competition, but also in our community. And in this year across the board, there were just some some really great highlights. You know, and uh, what we did in competition, you kind of touched on. And there are some pieces that that I'll always remember. Uh, certainly, what happened in Springfield, Missouri, uh, where that weekend where both the men's team and the women's team essentially clinched the regular season titles that, that year for, uh, for this year. For me personally, it was great because I took my oldest son down there and to be able to share that moment with him uh, uh, down the court in the locker room after both those games was, was just fantastic for me uh, as, as a father and as an athletic director. But then you look at some of our other sports that maybe don't always receive the recognition or attention. And, and one that really jumped out was rowing this past year. You know, because of all the, the rain and the flooding in this area, it's a team that I'm not sure got on the water at all to train. They, they had to train on their ergs upstairs in the, in the NAP Center. 
but yet went out to their conference championship out, out in New Jersey, had their best finish in years, finished third. That really stands out to me. It's really exciting to see kind of what, what's happening on this great campus and it's, uh, it's a sign of, of more things to come because we're just scratching the surface. Recently, Susie Glazer Burt made a $5 million donation to the women's basketball program, which tied the largest non-capital campaign donation to a women's basketball program. And as we saw, the money had a bigger message. How impactful was it seeing women supporting women? Oh, it, it's so inspiring and motivating. You know, it's what Susie's gift has done, it will transform our women's basketball program. Uh, but it, it also sends a message to so many others around just kind of uh, what the power of philanthropy and, and just supporting you know, a, a team like that at Drake, but just finding something that you're passionate about and, and, inspire, and inspiring others to, to, to get involved in some way. That, that's the message that I take from it. What Susie's Gift is going to do in, in terms of being able to set our women's team up to have success in the future is, is, will be well documented. And, but what I really love is that Susie found a connection to our women's program through my predecessor, through our women's basketball head coach, through members of that of that team, and got and got to know them really well, and wanted to do something. Not not everyone uh, can give at the five million dollar level. Certainly, if, if you want to, I mean, <laughs> we've got you know 17 other sports I'd love to try to connect you with. But there are so there are so many great stories like what women's basketball ha has done in, in other parts of our department. What I love is that Susie is, is inspiring others to get involved and find something that you care about. You, even if you can't give money to that level. You can give support, you can attend events, you, you can get others to, to be aware of, of what uh, some organizations are, are trying to do. So I, I think it was just another great example. Susie is, is such a wonderful person and has done so many great things in our community and certainly what she and her family have done at Drake University is incredible. I love the fact that right across the street from the NAP Center this August we're going to open up the new Boys and Girls Club. It's going to be only the third Boys and Girls Club on a private campus in the United States. It has Susie and Greg's uh, name on it. And so t for us now to be able to create an endowed position, you know, Jenny's head coaching position will be the Susie Glazer Burt head coach for women's basketball moving forward and that it'll be that way forever. Uh, and that's fantastic. But women empowering women, what, what it does to, to motivate hopefully others to, to give and empowers our women's basketball program and our student athletes to believe that they can achieve more than maybe what they thought of before that gift. It's, it, it, it's exciting. It, it, it just, I, I can't even you know, put into words what, what it means for all of us around the program. And we've hit on a lot of topics so far, but uh, one that we haven't gotten to quite yet until now is the, the student aspect of the student athlete. Every team in the athletic department finished with at least a 3.0 GPA. That's incredible. We have true student athletes at Drake University. And that's something that we take great pride in because anybody who knows Drake knows that we don't have majors that you can hide kids in necessarily. I mean, that there isn't basket weaving or some of these other majors that you might see at some other schools. You got, you're gonna come in here and, and you're gonna challenge yourself in the, in the classroom. And you have to accept that and embrace that before you walk in the, and walk in the door to, uh, to your, your first year on campus. So it's, it's, it's fantastic what Stephanie Sledge and Dalton Moberly do in our academic services department. It's just fantastic. They're one of the best units that we have here. Always receive rave reviews from our student athletes in their exit uh, interviews. You know, we, we also had a great year in, in the sense that we had five more academic All-Americans. So five more academic All-Americans, that puts us at 13 in the last two years. 13 academic All-Americans in the last two years, just for some perspective here, there's 351 NCAA Division I institutions. In the last two years, our 13 ranks fourth in the country. The only schools that have more academic All-Americans than us in the last two years, Alabama, Stanford, and Minnesota. Those are all schools that have many more student athletes than what we have here at Drake. And so for us to be right there at fourth, to be ahead of the other 347 schools that, that offer Division I athletics is truly remarkable. So it's, we're, we're so you know, fortunate to have the type of, of student athletes that we have here at Drake, but also the great support from some of our staff members. Many reasons to be proud to be a Bulldog after last season, but as we kind of look forward to the, the next sports season, uh, when, I, when I'm around town and interacting with Bulldog fans and alumni and, and just Des Moines sports fans in general, the word that always pops up is momentum. How do you capitalize on the momentum that Drake seemingly has right now? It, it's a very real thing. I think a lot of people can feel it. I certainly, you know, in 
various stops around the, the summer and during the spring, people come up and, and make comments about different things about how, how different and how, how the, the dir uh, direction and trajectory we have right now are, are so exciting. And so you want to keep that going. And I think that, you know, it, we are trying to reaffirm Drake as Des Moines' hometown team, and, and, we, and we want to find those opportunities or where they exist to try to capitalize on that. I think making sure that our athletes still get out into the community, and I kind of touched on the over 4,000 hours of community service that they're doing, making sure that people can, can come in and, and that they can get to our events. So I think we, we've done some really nice things the past couple of years to try to make sure that the access and affordability to our games, are, are people are well aware of just how easy it is to get to Drake's campus from anywhere in Central Iowa, how affordable it is to, to come down and, and bring family members here. Uh, so I, I think that we want to continue to build on that. And then, you know, we'll always continue to go out there trying to find ways to, to increase resources. The keys to, to, to success in any athletic department, it really comes down to three things. It's, it's people, it's culture, and it's resources. We've got great people in place. We've kind of documented really well about just kind of the different kinds of people that we have here, from student athletes to coaches to staff, and the support that we receive from President Martin and our Board of Trustees. The culture here of, of understanding that we have true student athletes and what we want to do to excel in the classroom and in competition in our community is, is, is in a great spot. The resources piece is, is, is coming along and we'll continue to look to try to find new ways to try to add to that, to try to continue to put our athletes in the, in the best position to achieve that sustained level of success that we know we want them to, to achieve and know that they can here at Drake. So a lot of great things going on here. Uh, I mentioned before, we're only scratching the surface of what, what can be done here. And I, I can't wait to see what's gonna happen over these next one, three, five years. Thanks, Brian. I appreciate your time. A little uh, State of the Union address from the AD. Here's a look at our new monthly series. You make history every day, but you don't always record it. So I always try to keep a scrapbook. Paul did all of the the real, um, the real hard work um, with this collection. So we wanted to make sure that we're just preserving his legacy. The potential to share um, stories um, from this collection really is limitless. And that's what we want as an archive. We don't want the things to just sit on the shelves. We want people to come in and use them. We want people to learn from them. We want to be able to tell Drake's story. My thanks to Hope Bibbins and everyone over at the Coles Library. That's going to be a really fun project to work on in the future. Now I'm over by the weight room where the football team has spent nearly every morning this month working out at 5 a.m. It's a grind, but even when there's a break, you're going to find guys out in the world making an impact, like in this story. Set, hit. Connor Farou and Mitch McFarlane are preparing for the fall football season. Yet their most important work was done a month ago, nearly 8,000 miles away. When we were over there, we weren't athletes, we weren't students. We were just people caring about one another. The trip was initiated by running backs coach Kirk Warrett, one of the newest members on the staff where it joined Drake a year ago after spending the previous eight as head coach of Trinity International, a Christian school in the Chicago land area. There's some real injustice going on in this world. And it's really easy as Christians, it's really easy to sit on our hands in America because we don't see this stuff day to day. I wouldn't want to coach at a college for a coach that wouldn't allow and wouldn't, it wouldn't um, encourage guys to serve and get involved. And Connor and Mitch, where it found two people ready to make a difference. Hearing how passionate he was about it is what sort of sparked my interest. Just like, wow, an opportunity to go to India, you know, which eventually evolved into like the real purpose why we were there. The purpose? Spending nine days in India at a human trafficking safe house, a mission that Coach Warrett has participated four times. Part of what we do is we just go and try to have fun and make them laugh and just be kids again. And I think that's probably the biggest thing we do there. It was just a bag passed around with a, like something you had to do. Sometimes you had to act or dance or tell a story. Mitch broke out some dance moves, uh, which was funny. Uh, they weren't too impressed, <laughs> it seemed like. <laughs> By the end of the week, they called us Big Brother uh, in Hindi, um, which, was, which was really cool. They were um, just seeing the, the kind of the progression of how they felt towards us was awesome. And the two football players saw a similar evolution in themselves. 
I view a lot of people in my life as really strong individuals, but when we were over there, like I will just say the strongest individuals I've ever met in my life are between the ages of like 10 and 20. I'll be a lifelong advocate for fighting against human trafficking. The discussion of human trafficking is uncomfortable, but the broader issues are worth it. What um, sort of touches my heart more is that I think men really across the globe are, are part of the problem because that's where the demand is stemming from. I, I feel like we're allowed to, to get in and be a part of those kind of um, at times messy conversations with guys, at times kind of messiness of, of the world, um, but be a part of serving and, and trying to get involved and make a difference. Difference makers. It's more than a motto. Thanks for joining us on the first Drake Insider. June isn't where championships are won, but you can definitely see this is where it all begins. We'll see you next time. Thank you for watching The Drake Insider, a Drake Sports Media production.